It started when I was a, a young man. Um, I was assaulted by a gang. I had three or four guys. I'm not sure how many guys there were. There were, there were a few of them. They attacked me from behind, and I don't know how many there were. But they kicked me unconscious, and they beat me and kicked me until I had passed out in the middle of the road. Um, right before I passed out, there's a few things that I remember. One thing was of my wife and how bad I felt for her and how um, I felt guilty that she was going to have to raise my three daughters by herself. Um, I remember thinking of my daughters, how my daughters were going to live without a father and how bad that made me feel. And the last thing I remember was saying a prayer. And I prayed to God that if he can get me through this, then I would find Jesus and I would follow him. And I looked for justice. And I don't know where I was looking for justice. I wanted the police to come help me. I wanted the Air Force to come help me. I wanted my parents to help me. And each one of those avenues fell apart for me. Nobody was there, nobody. My parents blamed me for putting myself in that situation. The police didn't believe my story. The Air Force sent me to rehab. Um, and it was just a crazy situation, you know. And the only thing I did wrong was walk a friend home from a party. I felt betrayed. I felt lost, and I wasn't sure how to handle that. And I know that I made a promise to God, and I didn't fulfill it. I said I was going to follow Jesus, and I didn't do it. And I spent the next 25 years fighting that battle of trying to find justice and, and, and figuring out what went wrong there. And I went through depression, I went through anxiety. I, mean, I still today have a hard time sitting in a restaurant with my back up against the wall. And I needed an outlet and I've, you know, I've seen therapists, I've seen um, psychologists, I've seen everything I can, but God coming into my life was finally that result. I felt like there was absolutely no justice and, and I was mad. I was mad at God. I asked for justice. I said a prayer and I asked him if he can get me out of this. Well, apparently he did. <laughs> it just wasn't what I was expecting. And, and so when I learned to forgive those guys, it was, it was shortly after um, I was baptized. I learned to forgive those guys. And that's when justice really started happening. That's when my heart started to release. Being new to Compass North, at the time I didn't know anybody and I wasn't sure who, what to expect. Um, I didn't know what the small groups were like. But as you start to share your stories and talk to people, you become very welcomed. It becomes a family, it becomes a small group of people that share their lives together. And I might have been a little anxious to begin a small group, but when I was in it, I'm glad I was in it. And, and everybody I've been in a small group with today are, are still my friends. I still consider them very important in my life, very important to my faith, and, and um, I love them all. I can't put um, feelings or words or emotions and anybody else but myself. You know, I don't blame my parents for what they said. I don't blame the cops for not taking their direction. I don't blame the Air Force for anything they did. It was all a path. It was all a path that I had to take. And, and, and it brought me here today.
to Compass North Church. I'm Charlotte Hunt, and if you're a visitor joining us today, we want to say welcome. We are so glad that you are here. Could you do us a favor? Would you take a moment and share this stream with your family, with your friends, so that they can join along in this worship service with us? We have a wonderful service coming up, and we're gonna have some worship music. We're gonna have a life-changing message from our very own Pastor Joe, who is our lead pastor. And in a few minutes, we're gonna have service, and you're gonna notice on the line, there's gonna be a chat that you can join. We want you to join the conversation, get to know us, say amen, and just join the service. And afterwards, just hang in there in that lobby so we can chat with you, get to know you, become friends, and see how you enjoyed service. Right now, let's enjoy service and worship together because the Lord has made this day. Good morning, Compass Lord Church. We're so glad that you guys tuned in this morning. Please worship with us. Break of day and hope we rise. We speak your name. We lift our eyes, tune our hearts and to your beat.
Come on, let's continue to worship together. We're going to lift up our God and sing about his promises.
We thank you for your promises, my Lord. We stand on your promise. We stand on your promise this morning.
right. Good morning, Compass North Church. We just hope you're worshiping right along with us at home. I'm Pastor Dave. Good morning. I'm Beth. And we are so excited to be here with you. And I'll tell you what, right now, if you were here with us, we'd be having everybody do Compass North high fives and fist bumps. But since we can't all be together right now, why don't you take a second, go to the comments on the side there, and go ahead on Facebook and do a high five to somebody or maybe an air hug or something. Just welcome everybody here. We really are so glad that you all chose to join us today. Man, and if you're watching us for the first time today, we would love to get connected with you. We are big on relationships here at Compass North. And I'll tell you what, in fact, what, you, what we would like you to do is just text Connect CNC to 97,000. Connect CNC to 97,000. And when you do that, you just fill out a little form. We call it our connection card. Check this out. Here's what we are doing today. For every connection card that gets filled out, first of all, we are donating 20 meals on your behalf to the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank. Isn't that wonderful? Also, another thing we're gonna do is we are gonna get a gift in your hand. For every person who fills out a Connect card, we are gonna send you a gift. It's called Right Now Media, and there's all kinds of resources in there. It's just gonna bless you and your family's lives. So fill that out, Connect CNC to 97,000. Amen. Hey, here at Compass North, we believe in the power of prayer. So we always tell each other, you know, don't go through this life alone. So I would just invite all of you that it's watching here this morning, if you have any need at all, great or small, we would love to pray along with you. And so if you text Connect CNC to that same number that Dave just mentioned, 97,000, there you'll find a spot there for prayer requests. And we have a team of people that prays on your behalf the entire week long. So if you have any need at all, give us that need. We would love to pray right along with you. And then when God comes through for you, we want to know about that too. So you can use that same Connect CNC to 97,000. When God comes through and he answers those prayers, we would love to know about that so that we can celebrate right along with you. And then also, we would love to have you connect with us on social media. Yes. You can like our Facebook page, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have events going on every single day of the week that you can get connected to and um, stay connected with us. We would love to have you every day. Yes, yes, yes. Please do so. And hey, we're going to receive our weekly tithe and offering here virtually. And, but we just want to thank you. Compass North for your generosity. We just want you to know that even in this quarantine time, maybe especially in this quarantine time, the church is still able to be the church because of your generosity. We have so many things going on right now. We've been doing food drives and, and helping people that way. We're also being able to bless a lot of people. And there's a program going on, on downtown Akron where we're able to give a lot of items to the quarantine center to help the homeless. And this is something you're going to get to see that we're going to be able to be a part of. It's so wonderful. If you want to see a little bit more about some of that stuff, make sure you're watching us on social media this week, and you'll see more about how to get involved in those things. But we're just so grateful for a God-blessed church, the way we have a generous people in this church and able to really be the church in this special time. So we just ask you to just join us in giving right now. There's four different ways you can give. There's one way, of course, you can go on compassnorthchurch.com. Real easy right there. You can also give on our Compass North app, our CNC app. And if you don't have our Compass North app yet, you've got to download that. What you can do is you can just text CNC app to 97000. CNC app. Once you download that, not only are you able to give on there, which is super easy, but also you can follow along Pastor Joe's message. It's a great way to do that. And also, you can see all the things going on at Compass North and just stay plugged in with the family of God here. So please do that. The third way you can give is you can just text to give. And it's really simple. The first time, all you do is you text the amount you want to give to 84321. Just text the amount to 84321. And what will happen is you'll just fill out a short form. And then after you do that the first time, every time you want to give after that, next week and the following weeks, you just text the amount you want to give. And that's a, that simple. So if you want to do it that way, that's a fun way to go. One more way you can give is you can just send your tither offering, your gift right into Compass North through a P.O. Box 
26104, Akron, Ohio, 44319. If you want to send a check or whatever, it's easiest for you that way. So we'd just love for you to continue to join us in that way. And we're just going to just praise God for all he's doing. Let's pray over this morning's service and our offering. Father God, thank you, Lord, that you are a loving God and that you know everything that is in our past, in our present, and what's going to be in our future. And so, Father God, we know that because you know that, um, you care for us, you will care for us, you will put your hedge of protection around us. Lord God, there is nothing too great for you, and we just honor your name, Father, and we just appreciate everything that you do for us. We pray over today's service, Lord Jesus, that you would anoint Pastor Joe's message, and that um, you would open every heart that's watching here this morning, and that you would just do a mighty work in your name. And we pray, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. In fact, Pastor Joe is going to be coming up with a life-giving message right after this short message. What is up, Compass North Church? Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Church Online. Man, I am so excited. Week after week, I get so pumped knowing I get to come in your home and preach the gospel right where you're sitting. It's also so exciting to know that week after week, so many brand new people are joining in, tuning in to our online campus and hearing the gospel message, some for the first time ever, and are responding, making fresh starts, saying, I want Jesus Christ to be at the center of my life. And listen, we are so thrilled about what God is doing, even in this crazy season. God is still on the throne. He's still reaching hearts. He's still touching families, and he's still doing miracles all around us. It is so awesome to know that today, listen, today, if you'll lean in to your screen to hear this word, open your heart. Listen, God has something powerful to speak into your life today. I can't wait. I can't wait until we get to hear the reports. Hey, God has done something awesome in my life. We are in a series, the third installment of a series that we're calling Destiny Defining Decisions. We're talking about making critical decisions, daily decisions uh, uh, in our lives by posturing our heart with a predetermined reality that we want to live, a, a, a way that we want to live our lives so that every day the decisions we make will go through that filter and that filter leads us closer to God's destiny for our life. We talked about that we got to turn our hearts in a way to God because it's direction, not intention, that determines our destination. And it's the decisions that we make that determines our direction. So we have to find a heart posture that causes us to make decisions that lead us closer to God every single day. We're going to talk today about what I think is a, an incredibly profound decision 
that you have the opportunity to make right now. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a heavy decision. It's often a misunderstood decision. But it is a decision, I promise you, that if you will lean into it today, it will completely and radically transform your life. The decision I want to talk to you today about is surrendering your life to the Holy Spirit. Surrendering your life to the Holy Spirit by saying, Holy Spirit, I want you to take the lead in my life. I want to surrender control of my life to you, and I want you to lead my life, to be a spirit-led individual that wants the work of the Holy Spirit to impact your everyday life. And if you will make that decision and you will open your heart up to that decision, I promise you, it will change your life forever. I I want to just point to where we are right now in the world, I think the world has reached its limit. I don't know about you guys, but this past week just kind of felt like that week for me. I reached my limit. I just had to get away, go for a walk. I spent hours in the wilderness, if you will, in the, in the, among the trees and in the forest, just getting alone with God because it just it felt like I hit my limit. It's like craziness on steroids all around us all the time. Matter of fact, I was looking on uh, Google and some Facebook stuff that came up this last week that really proved the point. The world has hit its limit. Let me show you a couple pics I came across. This was the first one I came across this week. I'm gonna call it pool pool noodles. This is pool noodles. This guy right here is telling me, you know what, the world has met its match and has reached its limits. He's making sure people stay six feet away from him. That's what he's doing right there. Pool noodles around the head. The world has reached its limit. How about this apocalyptic costume? Apocalyptic costume. Now listen, just six weeks ago, if someone would have walked in the supermarket looking like that, you would have tackled them and threw them out. That's our new norm. The world has reached its limit. I'm going to dress up in bags in a mask and I'm going to go get groceries. Just crazy. Or maybe this one. This, you know you've really reached your limit when you put the bucket on your head. She's in a New York subway, and she's like, that's it. I can't take it anymore. I'm just going to put my head in a bucket and go ride a subway train. The world has reached its limits. Maybe you parents out there, take a look at this one. This is so true. 33% of your job as a dad is staring at your kids like this until they act right. Listen, I think the last couple weeks, 50% of my job has been staring at my kids just like that. I pity the poor fool. That's what I keep saying in my heart. I dare you to do that one more time. I'm going to (laughs) snap. I love this one. This one I just found the other day. Maury Povich, if you're in the 90s, you'd know this. You said you love spending time with your kids. The COVID-19 quarantine determines that was a lie. (laughs) That was a lie. That ain't your baby, Maury. Sorry. Thought that'd make more sense than it made me had. The world has reached its limit. I've reached my limit. I think a lot of us have reached our limit. And, and in all honesty, these are funny ways to talk about it. But when things become so overwhelming, and it's not funny. When, when you feel like the world is caving in around you and crushing you, it's not funny at all. And let me tell you something. There is a way to live supernaturally above everything that is going on in the world around you and allow for your spirit to still thrive when everything else seems to be going crazy in your life. And that is to allow the Holy Spirit to fill your life. That if you will be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible promises it gives you a power, a power that is beyond you. It gives you an authority that is beyond you. It allows you to live bigger and more powerfully in the world that is actually crumbling all around you. Here's what Acts 1.8 says. The promise of Jesus to the disciples, he said this, you will receive Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There will be a power that you will live so strongly in the power of the Holy Spirit, it will witness to everyone around you all over the world of the power of God that is at work 
in your lives. The power, the power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Shorthand makes you make really dumb decisions. Somebody's thinking, where was that scripture last week? (laughs) Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Here's the deal. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. If you're going to fill your life with something that will cause you to make better decisions, that will cause you to live above the stumbling, that will keep the things out of your spirit that want to contaminate your spirit, here's what Paul says to the church in Ephesus, be filled with the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit take control of your life. Here's my admonition. Here's here's why I want to come to you this morning and encourage you, you need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The best way that I could, could, could give this an illustration is I've got two cans, two cans. There's a difference in them, not necessarily outwardly, you wouldn't know, but it's what's happening inwardly that makes a difference. This can is empty. This can is completely full. Totally filled. The empty can, let me just take that for a second and say, when life comes to throw blows at you, the empty can, one little touch just kind of caved the side in and life just keeps happening and all around you, it's almost effortless. I'm not really even applying too much. It's just here a little, there a little. And then all of a sudden you come into a season like we're in and it's not just, a, well, they said something bad or they did something wrong or I'm offended at them. Now it's, People are dying around me. The world is shutting down. I lost my job. Now it starts to be a real heaviness that actually starts to try and crush my spirit. And if you live empty without a supernatural power, your life will become crushed by the things around you. But you take the same similar can, but you cause it to be absolutely filled with something inside of it now, it kind of hurts whenever I bring something against it. It's not making much of a penetration, none at all. Matter of fact, I bounce back from whatever I'm trying to inflict on it, and no matter how hard I try, I cannot squeeze this thing to the point of compressing it and destroying it. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, God gives you the power to go through storms and struggles in your life and they cannot bring you down and they cannot crush you. Here's what 2 Corinthians, watch this, 2 Corinthians verse four, uh, chapter four, verse seven through nine says this, and Paul speaking, I love this, but we have this treasure in jars of clay, this treasure, speaking of the Holy Spirit, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. It's God's power in us and not our power. We are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, God's power gives you strength that you'll go through things that should crush you, but you'll come out strong on the other side. That's what God is wanting to do in our lives. And let me tell you, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God's power in you. Listen, you need it to fulfill the purpose that God has on your life. You need the Holy Spirit in your life to fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. Listen, when I'm running on empty, I'm easily perplexed. I'm easily damaged. When I'm running on empty, I crumble under great pressure. I know it. I know it. Maybe you know it. What it's like to run on empty. Here are a couple things. Maybe they can be the barometer for where you're at right now. I found this in my life and many other people's lives. Running on empty looks like this. You're easily annoyed. Come on. You're easily annoyed. Everything just seems to annoy you. It's because you're running on empty. I'm, I'm, when I'm running on empty, I'm constantly exhausted. I may get eight hours of sleep, but I feel like I got no sleep whatsoever. When you're running on empty, 
You feel constantly exhausted. Maybe it's, it's the other thing here that you feel emotionally unstable. Don't look around the living room at anybody you feel is emotionally unstable right now. But, but a sign of running on empty, you're, you're so volatile in your emotions. You're just, you're up one minute, down a minute, up one minute, down a minute. And people walk in the room and never know which version of you they're going to get. You come to work and they're hoping that they get Sweet Sally and Cool Chris. But they, they may get Monster Molly and freak out Freddy. I don't know, I'm just making up on the scene, but listen, they just never know what they're going to get because you're emotionally unstable and it's a sign of the fact that you're running on empty. But maybe it's, it shows up in your life as being argumentative. You ever met that person, they just want to argue about anything. You're like, oh, I really like your orange colored shirt. And they're like, it's salmon. I guess that's how you'd say it. Salmon color. You're like, dang bro, sorry. Didn't realize it was that touchy. Just, just want to argue about everything. They just, you see them on Facebook all the time. They're just running on empty, so they jump on Facebook, and they want to pick a fight and be argumentative all the time. Or these people show up on Facebook as well. They're regularly offended. Maybe that's where you're at. Just regularly offended. Just constantly offended and being offensive, and it's a sign that you're running on empty. And here's, here's even the, the greatest sign, I think, and probably the greatest tragedy, and that is that you're lacking joy. When you're running on empty, you're not living in the joy that God wants you to live in. Let me just say this to you. Let, let, me, let me say this. It, I don't believe it's a sign that you're broken. I think it's a sign that you're empty and you need to be filled. And if you were filled, what you thought was just you're broken, you, 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 there's, this is unfixable in you, this is just a problem, a generational problem for you, I think it's that you're living empty, and if you will let God fill your life, you will find yourself living in joy, living in peace, living in strength, living in love, overflowing with excitement for life and for people. It just changes everything about your life when you allow your life to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray that you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, listen, I, I know already, I've been talking for a few minutes here, and already there's some people who are listening right now, and you're kind of wigging out. Like, you hear the word Holy Spirit, and you think of some crazy stuff you saw on YouTube. Right, just like, oh no, here he, I didn't realize this, he's a Holy Spirit guy. And, and you, start, you start thinking of all the whack out things you've ever seen. Let me just tell you a couple things about the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit is not weird. The Holy Spirit is not weird. No matter what you've seen on, on YouTube or on television, the Holy Spirit is not weird. Listen to me, people are weird. People are weird. The Holy Spirit is not weird. People are weird. And sometimes weird people encounter the Holy Spirit and do weird things and call it the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not weird. People are weird. Let me, let me just like, liken it this way. Maybe it'll just be a little more practical. I hope this isn't sacrilegious. But Facebook is not weird. It's actually incredibly thoughtful and amazing what, what the power of it could be, right? To create a platform where you can personalize yourself and you can create a profile and you can find people that you've known throughout life that you, that you haven't seen forever, connect with them and share life experience where you are now. It's actually really awesome. Facebook isn't weird. People are weird. And they make Facebook really weird sometimes, right? So there's nothing wrong with Facebook. There's something wrong with certain people. Can I tell you, there's nothing wrong with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's not weird and scary and crazy. People are weird, scary, and crazy. And you need to let down your guard just for a minute. And let's, let's talk today about what the Holy Spirit could look like alive in your life and leading your life. The second thing I want to tell you is this. Jesus emphasized the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He emphasized the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He put a pronouncement on it and said, it is an advantage for you that I go away. This is what he said in John chapter 14, I believe it was. It's an advantage for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the Holy Spirit your advocate, your helper, your comforter won't come, but if I do, he will come. Jesus said, the, having the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, it's not only not weird, it's your advantage. It should be what you desire more than anything else. 
is to have the Holy Spirit at work in your life. I'll never forget, we, we do something here called PATH, which we're going to be launching here in about a month that we'd love for you to jump in. It's the way of getting behind the scenes in the church and hearing the vision and what we're all about. And we talk as deep as we can about what our structure looks like, what our authority structure looks like, what, how we spend our money around here. We, just talk, we talk about it all for people who want to investigate what this church is about. And then we offer some time for Q&A. And I'll never forget years ago, when we first started this, I was teaching PATH class and we opened up for that Q&A point and there was a woman who looked at me and she said, now, Joe, listen, I like everything I've heard about this church. I like the worship. I, I love the singing. You know, I love, I love the people. I, I like your preaching. I, I, I'm sold on all that. But she said, I just guess I have to ask you one question. I just, there's one thing that's kind of out there for me that I'm just kind of teetering on. And she said this, this, these were her words. Are you guys those Holy Spirit people? And I, it took me back for a second. This is kind of an awkward way to put it. You know, are you guys the Holy Spirit people? And I just stepped back for a second, and this is my answer to her. I said, you know, there could have been a million things I could have said at that moment, but this is what I said. How else do you think all this is happening? Like, how else do you explain marriages that were completely falling apart and that no one thought they could come back together again, that God restored their marriage? How else do you think that drug addicts, heroin addicts are coming here one time Praying prayers to God and being completely set free. You think that's because I'm smart? You think that's because we got a great team? You think that's because we have enough ingenuity? You think that's be, that, that preaching alone can do that? How else do you think what is happening here is happening here? And now six years later, hundreds and hundreds of people are, are experiencing life transformation. Families are being absolutely changed by the power of God. That's not because we're crafty or because we're intelligent. It's because we're Holy Spirit people. We need the Holy Spirit. I, we have nothing if we don't have the Holy Spirit. And I'm screaming up in here and I'm screaming up in your house because I am convinced we don't have anything if we don't have the Holy Spirit. There's, there's nothing worth living for if we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit alive in our lives to raise us from the dead, to bring us into relationship with Christ Jesus but by the power of the Holy Spirit. So 100%, we're Holy Spirit people because we have nothing without him in our lives. So here's my, my, my honest plea today, is that is I pray that you will let the Holy Spirit lead your life. That you will give completely, complete control over your life to the Holy Spirit so that you can engage what Jesus said. It is to your advantage your, John 16 is where it is. I think I said John 14. John 16, 7, it is to your advantage that I go away. And here's what he said. This was his qualifier of the Holy Spirit. He said, so that the helper will come in John 16. So your helper will come. This is, this is the word parakletos. This is that's the Greek word for helper. It goes on to say in John 14, 16 is where I was, re another reference. I, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. That, that's the same word, parakletos, but it's now advocate. So it's helper and it's advocate. And it says, he will never leave you. He will never leave you. So the Holy Spirit, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you three T's that you can write these down. You can take notes. I, I, like, I like putting alliterations together for you. So, so three T's. The first T that you need to understand about the Holy Spirit is he's your teammate. He wants to be your teammate, bring you onto God's team and empower you to win in a way you couldn't win on your own. The, the Bible says that John calls him a helper and an advocate, a helper and an advocate. I'll never forget one day we were out shooting hoops a number of years ago. We were out shooting hoops and it, it was at the green gym. Uh, my kids go to green uh, schools and we were there and they had some hoops that were 10 foot and some hoops that were eight foot for the younger kids and Rylan was able to make 10-foot shots. Colton was just getting there, so he was trying really hard. He'd make one out of every so many of those. But London, she couldn't even come close. 
And so she was just struggling so hard to throw the ball as high as she could, and she'd miss it by six feet. Like, it just wasn't getting up there. And so I said, baby, and she was so, you could just see it on her face, you know. She was so desperate to actually get the ball up there some kind of way. And so we were about to leave. I said, guys, we got to go. And she said, daddy, I want to make a shot. I want to make a shot. And so I took her over to the eight-foot hoops and let her try, and she still wasn't making it. So I said, okay, listen, this time I know you're going to do it, right? I said, you stand right here, and I want you to give it all you've got. And when I saw she was crouching down like this, as soon as I saw her do that, I ran behind her. I picked her up as high as she could, so she was almost head level with the hoop, and she basically just dropped the ball in the hoop, and you should have seen her expression. I did it! I did it! I made the shot. She went out high-fiving people on her way out. I did it. Now, listen, she didn't no more do that on her own. I did 90% of the work. She did 10% of the work, right? But I'm not sitting over here trying to take credit for it. What I'm saying is, is that's what the power of the helper does in your life, is when you live in a way you can't possibly accomplish something, the helper comes along and picks you up as an advocate and allows you to live in a level that you can't possibly live in your life. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, I'm preaching, I'm screaming, I'm sweating. I feel good. Dun -na 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 -na. I knew that I would. Dun -na 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 -na. I feel good. So good. So good. So good. How did the rest go? I got you. I got you. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. I, I hope that, I don't even know what you're doing at home right now. I have no idea. The Holy Spirit in moments of weakness. Listen, in, in London's moment of weakness, I did the heavy lifting. In your moment of weakness, the Holy Spirit will do the heavy lifting. He will lift you up higher than you ever imagined and empower you in a way you never thought you could. Here, here's the deal. Here's what I, I want to preach. This, this, is, this is so important. I think I get this across. And that is this. Most Christians are living life for God, but they don't really understand the potential they have to live life with God. There's a big difference in living life for God and living life with God. That the presence of power, the power of God in your life is the witness of the Holy Spirit in your life. That when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you now are living life with God, not just for God. Here's what John goes on to say. He says this in John 14, 26. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, listen, will teach you. Here's the second thing I want to let you know. He will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said Jesus is saying this. So here's the second thing. The Holy Spirit is not just our teammate. He's our teacher. He's our teacher. I don't know about you, but I've had a few really bad teachers in my life. I've got two actually amazing teachers sitting on the stage right now. But I've had, I've had a couple really bad teachers in my life. And a bad teacher can take a subject you love and make you hate it. I'm gonna tell you right now. They can take a subject you love and make you hate it. But then I've had some really good teachers in my life, all right? I'll never forget, among all the good ones I had, Jerry Camry Hoggett was an amazing teacher. He was in my undergrad program as I was studying at Vanguard University in California, and he was a Markin scholar. He knew the book of Mark front and back. Matter of fact, he had it memorized. And I'm telling you, to this day, I had, I had, I had Jerry uh, probably 15 years ago, 16 years ago maybe, and to this day, the gospel of Mark is still my favorite gospel. I reference it more than anything else. I go to it more than anything else. It just came alive for me because on opening class day, Jerry Camry Hoggett came fully dressed in old ancient attire and without reading at all, he quoted, he literally recited the entire book of Mark from various people's he used various uh, tone inflections, gave voices to the characters. His voice, natural voice, was a narrator. He gave a voice to Jesus. He gave a voice to demons. It was awesome. He gave a voice to Peter. He just put voices to everybody. And we sat there for a few hours mesmerized. The whole story came to life in a way I'd never seen it before. It was just, it was so vivid. It was so real. And then he, for the next months, began to just expound on the depths of Mark. And I came out of that class so in love with the book of Mark because he made things that were always there come to life in a different way that I'd never seen before. Can I tell you, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit does in your life. He will teach you 
the values and the beauty of life from a perspective. You, it's always been there, but the Holy Spirit will invigorate it, will make it more alive, will make it, will make it more beautiful, will make it more bright. Every area of your life will begin to shine brighter as you look through the lens of what the Holy Spirit will teach you. Your marriage, listen, your marriage will be more beautiful and more bright if you allow the Holy Spirit to take control. If you will allow the, your, your parenting, your children, everything about your life, if you will invite the presence of the Holy Spirit into every area of your life, it'll change everything about it because he'll teach you the beauty of all things. It will be absolutely amazing. Life will be entirely more vibrant and meaningful when the Holy Spirit is teaching you, when you allow him to teach your life. And the third thing, I'm coming to a close with this. When he comes, and this is the, often the, the part where we kind of shy away from because of the word I'm about to say, you're going to know it as soon as I say it because it's one of those scary words, we think. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. And so we look at that and we hate the idea of conviction because I don't want to change anything. I don't want you messing with my life in any kind of way whatsoever. The third thing, the third T that the Holy Spirit will become in your life is he will become your transformer, your, your, your change agent. He will transform your life. L listen, I, I remember there was a young guy that came to our church uh, a number of years ago, and, and I remember he, he said to me, I knew, he knew that I knew he wasn't living a life pleasing to the Lord. Right? He kept coming, kept coming. I could tell he was enjoying it. He was starting to get involved in some groups, life groups and things. And, and I remember him coming and telling me, look, I love the church. I love worship. I love getting involved in the community. I love your teaching. He said, but, but I got one question for you. Are you going to try and change me? Are you going to try and change me? And I said to him, without even batting an eye, 100% yes. 100% yes. Here's why. Because we preach the full gospel, the whole gospel, and the gospel, anytime you encounter it, it's going to transform your life. When you live in witness of the full presence of the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to do anything to change you. But if you live in the full presence of the gospel and the experience of the Holy Spirit, 100% yes, your life will be transformed. You will be completely changed. The things you thought you could never live without, you'll realize you don't ever want to live with them ever again. Because they were actually holding you hostage to a lesser value of life. And when you experience the power of the Holy Spirit, he sets you free. And you will know freedom in a way that you never possibly thought you could experience. So I pray, listen. Not only for that guy, I pray for me, I pray for everybody on this platform, I pray for everybody watching right now, yes, 100% yes, that you would be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray you would encounter, because whatever he changes is for your good, whatever he calls out of you is for your blessing, because he wants to set you free and allow you to live a life that you had no idea. Here, here's the deal, listen, this is the point about all this. The Holy Spirit doesn't convict us to shame us. He does so to change us. If he's, if he's pointing at something in my heart, it's because he wants it to change me because he knows better than I do. That's the thing that's actually keeping me without joy. That's keeping me living empty. That's keeping me from being fulfilled in every area that he wants me to be fulfilled in. It's not to shame me, to make me feel bad about who I am. It's to say, no, there's a better you on the other side of that. And if we can let that go, if you can get rid of that, the better you actually soars. And you will see what it feels like to walk in true power with God. Here's the key. Listen, I want you to get this. The Holy Spirit, and this is so important, the Holy Spirit, not only is he not weird, and not only does Jesus say how important the Holy Spirit is, you got to get this in your heart. The Holy Spirit is available, but he's not automatic. He, he makes himself available, but he's not automatic. Now, now listen, listen, I know you're saying, well, Joe, you're telling me that I, 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 when I encountered salvation that I, I don't have the Holy Spirit? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is, is if all you encountered was that moment of salvation, and you've never completely surrendered to the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. It's like the Holy Spirit showed up in your life in salvation with this massive bucket and said, if you'll surrender, I'll turn the faucet on and I'll fill this thing to overflowing. 
and you will live life in a way you never, ever thought you could possibly live. And I don't know about you, but my heart position every day of my life is, God, if you have more for me, I want it. If you have more for my life, I want it. Fill me full of everything you have for me. Watch this. Acts chapter 19 says this. Paul is going about preaching the gospel all around the world. While Apollos was at Corinth, the Bible says in Acts 19 verse 1, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples. And he asked them, hey, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, we have never even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. We, 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 were, we, were, we were taught about salvation, but we didn't realize that there was this Holy Spirit to even encounter. We didn't know that there was more that we could possibly have. And the Bible says that just the, just the question, they wanted more, and Paul laid hands upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately filled with the Holy Spirit because they, they realized there was more. And they said, if there's more, I want more. And all of a sudden, these believers were now baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's the deal. Uh, I started traveling a number of years ago. I was traveling a lot. And someone encouraged me. and said, you know what? You need to get, uh, you, need to, you need to kind of surrender to a certain airline and surrender to a certain set of hotels so you can get rewards. Like you'll get benefits by just using one hotel, one hotel chain over and over again. So I decided that I'm going to use Hilton and I decided I'm going to use American Airlines back in the day. I've since switched, but I decided I was going to use them. And, uh, um, and so I went and I finally, you know, after... Uh, I don't know what it was, maybe eight or 10 months, I reached diamond status with Hilton. I'm a big deal. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I'm, I'm a pretty big deal. Diamond status right here, right? And so now they laugh. Now they decide to laugh. And so uh, I remember the day, I'll never forget because I kept watching it and I knew I was going to reach diamond status and I reached it. And, and the next time I booked a hotel, it was like nothing changed. It's the same old experience. Like I just showed up and I'm thinking, wait a minute, I was sold a bag of lies. I was told if I would dedicate and surrender to one hotel chain, it was going to pay off and going to be amazing. And I'm thinking, nothing feels different. I walk in the lobby and nobody, nobody made me feel like, oh, diamond status is up in the building. Woo! Diamond status. Nothing. Bells didn't go off when I booked it. Like, like no emojis showed up on the screen. No, like nothing, nothing was different. Right, and so I, I go to the girl and I was checking in and I said, uh, I was staying in Dallas, Texas in this particular Hilton. And I said to her, I said, you know, I just have a question. I said, I, I actually surrendered. I, I, I committed to your hotel about a year ago, your hotel chain. And I've been staying with you guys. I've been traveling a ton. I've staying with you guys all the time. And I finally reached diamond status. And I said, I just got to tell you, like, Nothing changed. Like I didn't realize. I, I thought that there'd be something more to this. And she said, "Well, have you ever have you ever received an upgrade?" And I said to her, "I ne I never heard that there was an upgrade, right?" And she said, "Oh yeah, if you if you want," she said. And these were her words. She said, "It's available, but it doesn't happen automatic. You have to ask for it. And if you ask for so," I said to her, "I said, well, can I have an upgrade?" And she said, well, let me check on that for a minute. And she just does a little deal. And she says, you know what? One of our top level suites is not being used tonight and you can stay in there if you'd like to. And I said, I think I would. I went in there, it was like a 2,000 square foot room. It was the biggest hotel room I ever stayed in. I wish I had my whole family. I wish I had the whole church with me. I was all by myself in this upgrade, but I'm like, you gotta be kidding. This has been available to me the whole time. And I'm just now experiencing it because I asked for the upgrade. I could have, I could have had this, I could have this all the time, but it doesn't happen until I ask. And let me tell you something. That is exactly how the Holy Spirit works. And you know, so many times Jesus said, hey, you can have anything you want from the Father if you ask. It's available, it's just not automatic. Because there's something about the surrendering of asking and the humility of saying, I need you, and I, I desire you, that when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, and you begin to ask for the Holy Spirit, the Bible says this, look, this is exactly what the scriptures say, Luke says this in chapter 11, he says, if then 
though you are evil, know how to good, give good gifts to your children. Not one of the top things you wanted somebody to call you today. But those of you, even though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more will God fill your life with power if you'll just ask for the Holy Spirit? Can I tell you, it's available. It's not automatic, but all you have to do is ask. And God will pour out power into your life. You, listen, you need it. I need it. Everybody up here needs it. We need the power of the Holy Spirit for these three reasons. Because life is too hard, the devil is too aggressive, and our purpose is too big not to be filled with the Holy Spirit's power. You need it because life is too hard, the devil's too aggressive, and and listen, your purpose is too big to do it without the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. So the the Bible says the disciples knew this. They caught on to this quickly because in Acts chapter 13 it says, and the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. It's like they found the well and they just kept drinking. They just kept going after it. If there's more, I want more. If there's more, I want more. If there's more, I want more. The disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you something? I don't know how you've seen this displayed. I don't know what you have a a memory in your mind of. Maybe you met somebody who called themselves a spirit-filled individual and they made you feel less than because you didn't seem to have the same experience they have or whatever it may have been. Maybe you met somebody weird and you're thinking the Holy Spirit, whole thing's been weird and I just never turned it back on again in my life. But I promise you this, if you will, turn on, surrendering your heart to the Holy Spirit. Listen, he will he'll come alongside as, as your advocate and your helper and be your teammate and lift you up. And just like London took too much credit for the basket she made, listen, I think you take too much credit, I take too much credit for the things that happen in our lives. Can I tell you, it's the power of the Holy Spirit already at work in you that allows you to do the things you're doing right now. It's like the handfuls on purpose that God's saying, if you just ask for more of this, I can give you more of this. And God wants to do so much more in your life because the Holy Spirit wants to come alongside of you, pick you up, lift you up, and be your teammate. He also wants to be your teacher and lead you into all the ways of righteousness that bless your life and bring you hope and bring you power. And he finally, he wants to be your transformer. He wants to transform your life. But you'll never be the same again. Here's the deal. I'm closing with this. Being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you. This isn't a comparison thing. This isn't, it doesn't, the being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you. Here's what it makes me better. It makes me better than me. <laughs> it makes me better than the me I can possibly be in my, on my greatest day. Being filled with the Holy Spirit makes me better than me because it's a supernatural, abundant life that he invites me into to receive the power and the grace that he possibly, that he he can offer if I will ask of him. So I wanna pray over you. I wanna pray over us, I wanna pray over me, I wanna pray over you right now, right where you are. I wanna pray right now that if you want it, listen, if you want it right now, right where you are, you say, Joe, I, I want to be filled. I want to live a life surrendered to the Holy Spirit, and I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I want to live so saturated. God, if there's more, I want more. I want to be filled with your Spirit. If that's you, if that's you, right now I want to pray a prayer. I want you to turn your heart over to God and say, Lord, right now I'm ready. And the Bible says if you ask, he'll give it to you. You receive power, you'll receive an anointing, you'll receive a grace, you'll receive something so amazing in your life right now if you ask. So I'm gonna ask you right now, if you want it, when I pray this prayer, I want you to ask. Ask the Father, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And right now, I promise you, as your heart is surrendered to God, he's gonna fill you with joy and peace and power and strength. Matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, Ben was leading us in worship on one of our Wednesday nights of worship. He talked about a moment in the middle of the street after putting a roof on for a church that just like that, the joy of the Lord came into his life and he never looked back. Changed him in a moment just like that. The power of the Holy Spirit. So right now, right where you are, bow your head. I want you to pray. Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. I surrender to you. I want 
power of your spirit in my life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now. You said ask, so we're asking. Every single one of us, Lord, we ask with a heart of expectation. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Right now, God, in every living room, in every home, on every screen that's watching, no matter where they're watching, as they turn their hearts to you right now, we're asking, fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you right now. Take control. Take control of my life. I give you all that I am. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. Transform me. I don't ever want to be the same again. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for what you're doing in this place. And listen, as your head's bowed and your eyes closed, you're still praying, and we're praying here. Listen, I want to, I want those of you, listen, the, 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 I guarantee you, if this is the first encounter you've ever had with the Holy Spirit, the first direction he's going to give you is straight to Christ. If you've never If you have never accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will lead you into an understanding that Christ is your only way of salvation. You need to surrender your life to Christ. You need to accept what Christ has done on your behalf in your place, paid for sins you could never pay for, to overturn the judgment that you deserve and that I deserve. He took it on himself so that you could be free from the guilt and the shame all your sin and now because of what he's done through his sacrifice he's ascended to heaven and the Bible says he's creating a place for you to be with the Father if you receive it so right now all around the world every, in every living room listen if you right now if you need Jesus Christ to be at the center of your life you know you've never made Christ the center of your life but you feel the unction right now you can, that's the Holy Spirit's work in your life no man No man can come to the Father except by by Jesus Christ. And there is an unction in you, and you're feeling it. You feel the pull. I need this. That's the Holy Spirit tapping on you, saying you need to give Jesus your whole life. You need to receive the power of his salvation. So right where you are, I want to pray a prayer with you. I call it a fresh start prayer, a do-over prayer, because 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, those who unite with Christ, they get a fresh start. The old goes away, and the new comes rushing in. My goodness, that is amazing. Amazing to think about. He comes and wipes the slate clean. He says, go ahead. Let's start this thing new. Like it's, like it's the very first time. A brand new story. So right where you are right now, I want you to bow your head, close your eyes. I want to pray this prayer with you. And if you will turn your heart to God right now, you will call upon Jesus as Lord of your life. He will save you. You'll never be the same again. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I need you save my life I surrender I give all my life into your hands forgive me of all my sins everything I've done to push you away I'm so sorry come near to my life save me Jesus you are Lord of my life I surrender from this day forward I'm walking with you. Lead me. Help me become the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, that is so good. I am so excited. Listen, for what God is doing in your life today. I promise you, if you lean into this, you will never be the same again. You talk about destiny-defining decisions. This will change your life forever. If you'll lean in and receive it, God has so much in store for your life. So glad to be with you here today. I cannot wait till we can see each other again face to face. We'll give hugs. We'll, 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 we'll talk it up. We'll, we'll, we'll be so happy to see each other again. But listen, until that day comes, I pray that you will stay calm and prayerful. The Lord is on your side. Give his name all the praise every single day. God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing week. 
Hey there, Compass North Church. We hope you enjoyed service. It was so great having you. And hopefully you're gonna stay and hang out around in a little bit so we can chat together, get to know each other. And don't forget, all week we have services going on on social media and Facebook. Join us, get together, join in the service, join in the worship as we get together during the week. Thank you.